Lady Charmaine, and my guest today, the recording artist, and now she can add reality star to her credits. And she's back today to talk about the second season of the hit franchise, R&B Divas LA. Help me welcome back to the show, Miss Michelle. Welcome back. Hi, how are you? Good. All I want to say is welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you back on the show. And welcome back with the second season of your hit franchise. How does it feel to have a hit franchise? Um, it feels pretty good. It's, 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 it's a bit useful. I wasn't excited the first time because I was, you know, you don't know. And now you kind of know. You kind of just live. I think I just kind of live. You just kind of live. Did you ex- Yeah, you know, I just lived. I didn't want to make up anything. I didn't want to, you know, because I don't, I said not scripted. So, we kind of really lived. Whatever I was going through, I just, you know, I think you can't help it. Whatever they capture, you know, they're going to get it. Now, did you expect to receive another season from the first season? Um, I don't know. I always think that's up to the fans. Okay. Now, how has being a part of this reality show, how has it changed your life since the first airing of the first season? Um, <laughs> well, it's different from being a music person, you know, because people just, oh, I love their song. But when you're on television and people come up to you, they look at you and feel like you're different. And like, that's what I've never seen in a human before, like, <laughs> then they'll follow you around and then they'll go, I love you from somewhere. And you just go, oh, look, okay, you do. And now I'm like, I think they know my song, but now it's more about, you know, you're on that show with the, then they start naming all the girls. It's a big difference. And, and it's funny, when you're on television, I know it's different because people feel like they know you. So, and right. it's, it's like you become a girlfriend, and they want to go, go come up to you and talk to you about your business. Like, we really know you. And you're like, and you are? <laughs> but I, I think that's what television does. It gives us this, this sister girl feeling like we can relate to you, like we can just come up and start talking to you. Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't matter to me because I think my storyline, this story and what I was going through, I think I wanted people to be brought into my world. I wanted to stop hiding from myself. And that way, you know, it, it makes sense. You know, you can get on TV and fabricate what you like, but you're still lying for yourself. That's good. That's a good way to put it. Now, my question for you, you, you are opening up more of this particular season, and we, we touched on it in the first season you did. Now, in the second season, you're going deeper into um, your suicide attempt. What made you really want to open up and really share that with the world? And the one thing that really surprised me when you said, I think you uh, tried to, you tried it four or six months before you started taping the show. So why did you decide to open up about that? Um, well, because first of all, I kind of left it on a cliffhanger mm-hmm. last season where I really didn't go into detail because I really was just going through it. You know, I, I didn't really take time. I put a band aid on it. And so when I got off, I really went into like a, I'm saying more about gas and depression. So it kind of went backwards for me. And I went, oh, okay, either you're going to get depressed before or after, but it is a part of it. It's like the same animal. And I said, okay, so then at my whole, I think my life just seemed like it was a style around control. Although I had good things happening, um, there was the bad. And we always put the bad first. And, you know, we kind of forget that little great things happen all through your day. So what I, what I wanted to do this season was, open up and I know I'm not by myself, so I want to find those people who aren't afraid of themselves and, you know, and talk about it, because it's, it's, it's something that I think a lot of people could talk about, and that way we could maybe stop the ideas. I don't think you can stop people if they really want to do it. I don't, you know, I don't believe that. I think if you want to do something, you're going to do it. But at least if you have someone to talk to and, and, and express yourself, it helps. It just it really helps. Now, talking to you, just getting a little deeper, what would cause you to, to get to such a low that you would even want to even think or consider suicide? Well, that's the kicker. I don't know. Because you just get to a point where you just go, you know what, it's, you know, when you start waking up every day and nothing excites you, and you're, and you're living, you know, I'm living what, I'm doing what I want to do. 
you know, and that used to really make me happy and exciting, and I couldn't wait to do this and create that. And then one day, I just didn't want to do it, and nothing excited me. I would just wake up and go, ugh. You know, and then I was, and I don't know, there was nothing dramatic happen until I realized that I hadn't really grieved my grandmother and my mother, and then I kind of started putting a lot of things together. I thought, I, I found out that I was pressed a lot because I don't really, you know, you know, yeah, you just, you get over something real quick, like they died, I was over it in a week, you know, I, I'm, but I know that's not good, it's not healthy, mm-hmm. so now I know it's not healthy, so at some point, at some point in your life, I think it, it catches up, so to have a pet feeling about anything, it's probably not a good thing to do, so I've had a really tremendous, uh, I would say maybe 15 years, playing from the closest to being on television and seeing, you know, it's just kind of like, da 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 Yeah, to think about it. So how has that whole experience, because it wasn't too long ago, how has that whole experience changed you for the better right now? Uh, well, well, like I said, I, now instead of when something bad happens in the day or something is not going my way, I always go, ooh, but this good thing. So I start looking at all the good things that happen during the day. And I don't focus so much now on the things that didn't go well. And then I start putting that into um, a perspective and making it go well. I can fix that, though. You know, some things you can just fix and not immediately, but, you know, now I don't dwell on it like I used to. Like if something bad happens, I would say it just ruined my whole day. I start thinking like that. So I help, and, and you know, just a lot of everything that I do, you know, all of my little tools around me, I change out the bad people in my life, you have to get rid of them. Um, if you have people around you that are happier than you and you're not, something's not right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, everybody's happy. And then another thing I found out is when you do start working on yourself and become really focused, you start noticing that. The people that like you so much, that you're so happy, don't really feel you anymore because you're paying too much attention. Mm. You know? Like now, oh, I can't get away with that. I can't, you know? But you want that people to get out of your life. That's good. So what would you tell someone right now that's listening to this interview and they may be contemplating suicide? What would you tell them? I would say, you know, make that call to that one person that you want to talk to. Make the call to the one person that you confide in, that you have all this time. They're not going to look at you any different. Um, call a hotline. Call someone, because some most people who, who work hotlines, they're already there. So they're very, very helpful. Um, go outside. Go outside. Get some fresh air and look around at the beauty. You know, it's just... I, that just, you know, I can't tell them not to think about it because the sound is there, but, you know, but you got to make that phone call. You have to reach out. You just do what most of the time people do. Most of the time they do. Because you and Don Cornelius' son seem to have bonded over this situation because we know he lost his father, Don Cornelius, who was also the founder of Soul Train. You guys seem to have this great connection uh, from what it appears on television, do you? Oh, man. Don Cornelius' son, just because oh, he went through. Oh, my God, mm-hmm. yes, because I didn't, I knew that he was, that he had passed, but I didn't know how. So when they told me, I was, I couldn't believe it. And I said, oh, my God, you know, here's somebody once again, you think have everything. So why would he even think that, you know? Because I thought perception of everything. Oh, well, it's another big house and a nice car and a boyfriend. They're like a fat cat. So, I was really shocked, because the way he did it to himself, so when his son asked me to do the PSA, and came and, and told me that he was the one that found him, oh, this is the most touching thing, to be able to talk to someone who, he left him here. And to, 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 to do it, it, took, it took him time to get over it, but to talk to someone who actually went through it. Wow. It, it was helpful, and that's another thing that's helpful, too, is talking to people like him, because he went through it. You know, and to me, I would have considered that abandonment. This is what I've always thought about life. If everybody leaves me, I feel like I've been a, I'm an abandoned child. 
and said, let me see if it has like, wow, here's some more homemade. You know, I made it through, you know, he didn't give up, so, you know, my father didn't want to be here. You know, I would have took a picture and just said, hey, oh, they didn't love me. You know, I'm not glad that girl, he's emotional stuff. So to hear from him, it's beautiful. Wow. And and I think for you, if you were to have succeeded in that, to see the impact that it can have on the loved ones we leave behind. Right. You yeah. know, it's so for you to be the person to try to attempt it and then to see a loved one that was left behind and the pain that they have to deal with knowing that they lost a loved one to that. So I think that right there is definitely a great connection. And I see that you're working alongside with him. I believe is it a foundation in letting people know, bringing awareness to it. What is the name of that organization that he um, started? Uh, I stay here. I stay here. And, um, and I say, uh, people go, well, shouldn't you have been saying, I I'm still here? And I said, no. Because the attention is, is, is more... You know, since it's worse than you really making it over because you, you feel, you go through 15 emojis of stupidity. You know, I don't go, but I stay here, and that means that there was a reason. Why? Now, why? I don't, you know, that, that is a million dollar question. So I stayed here. After I did all that, I went through all that. I stayed here, and then I had to face everyone. You know, and explain myself. And I was humiliated. Tell myself. I, was, I embarrassed my own self. <laughs> and when I really realized that it wasn't going to help that Bill get paid and my daughter eat and my son had someone with grandchildren, I thought, what is an idiot? I'm just such a big idiot. So <laughs> I probably won't have a stupid again. I'm, I'm sure of that because I humiliated myself too much. Wow. I mean, to, to hear a person to come out of that and to hear them say that, you know, that's amazing to know that I'm sure of that. I won't be doing that again to really realize the damage it could have caused. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about the new season of R&B Divas LA. You have two new divas on the show. You have Chrisette and Michelle and also Leela James. What is it like having two new divas on the show? Well, it's awesome, but since we see the show in New York, I can't give up too much. Wow. But they are so talented, it's so, um, they're sweet, but I'm not supposed to say that they're nice. <laughs> because since you don't know, then I don't want to tell you what happened. So it's kind of like it's saying to be real. I think it's a great cast. Sweet. It's awesome. And awesome cast, all the ladies are getting along now. Are we going to see an R&B Divas LA tour coming together? What can the fans expect to see this season? Well, I hope so. Because everybody's working. We do this women empowerment thing together. We do. Um, and that's been really special. We, we really enjoy doing that together. Um, and I've seen those people like Wendy Williams first time and it was Tyler Perry the second time so we're we're learning as well <laughs> we're going hey this is good no. so that's a successful so hopefully we can pull us now, are you going to be working on a, a new album I remember we were talking before and I believe you was working on some music what do you have coming up I have my song that I finally finished but um to have the most sense, and uh, I just don't want to throw anything out there thinking I have to be commercial, and I go through this phase before, you know, the expectation of it is it, so much. You know, so I, I did a, I'm doing a three feet, I call it a three, three it's a three feet, but I call it a three feet. And um, the song that I'm going to just be letting you guys feel, be it still hurts. And it's just, it just sums up what I've been doing through and just finding the right words, finding the right lyrics, and the right music, and the right emotions. So. Okay, well, we definitely look forward to it. Now, do you have a website where people can go and find out what you're up to and when we can expect the new song? Yeah, it's Michelle Now. Michelle Now? Uh-huh. Okay, and you have any social media sites we can follow you on? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, my Twitter and my Facebook are the same. Michelle Music, M-U-Z-I-C. So they're both the same so that I wouldn't forget. So, now, is your name Michelle or is it Michelle? It's Michelle, but the hyphen, when you do it, in the, it's just, just you can do it in the name on one of them. Someone, you know how someone's like, say, on web page, if you do it, so it's just, 
I couldn't use it because the one had already been me many years ago. Mm, okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, Misha Lay, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And I want to remind the audience to be sure to watch the new season of R&B Divas LA Wednesdays, 10, 9 Central, only on TV One. Thank you so much, Misha Lay. And I'm so glad that you live to be able to tell your story and be able to encourage others. So thank you so much for your courage to tell your story. Thank you so much for having me, and I'll be talking to you again soon, I'm sure. Yes, you will, and I can't wait for the third season, too. Yeah, I hope so, I hope so, because this is a good chat. So I look forward to talking to you for the third season. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And have a blessed day. Okay.